This is Leisure Land Arcade in Akihabara in Tokyo. And a bunch of games going on. How about that? A lot of different stuff. I don't even know a lot of these games. Oh, I know this one. This one, I, th it's, I think it's Street Fighter Five. Oh, and somebody already has six wins in a row as Honda. Akihabara has a bunch of stuff going on. There's a lot of electronics areas. There are you know, a bunch of, I don't know, nerd things to buy. Uh, lots of little bars and some arcades. So we were just at Leisure Land and now we're going just literally around the corner to check out K Arcade. So every game center has this downstairs that has little games where you like put in a dollar and don't get a prize. And I don't know, they seem super popular. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. And I spared you the footage, but man, we spent a while. Well, they spent a while looking at the little tchotchkes that they could get out of another place. It was at the bottom of Leisureland Arcade. Where, I mean, look, just, that was just Red Bull. Just buy yourself a Red Bull. I don't know. I don't understand this phenomenon at all. It doesn't make any sense to me. Whatever. Anyway, luckily they just wanted to walk by at this time. The fighting games in these arcades are typically on the bottom, I'm sorry, on the top floor. Because um, they're like secluded, you know what I mean? Like you gotta ascend the stair. You have to be of a high enough mindset to be able to enter the realm of fighting games. That or else they just want to section it off from everybody else on it. You can see there's a bunch of stuff going on. And I, I, again, I don't even know some of these games, but most of the machines are crowded. Which is great, right? Uh, what's what's funky is that there's great variety not just in terms of the styles of fighting game but also in the era so like you'll see in this clip some pretty old games that are still getting a lot of play and this these orange ones here are street fighter 5 which nobody plays because the monitors lag and it's always hooked up to the internet so you're just playing online constantly and that's a terrible idea what a just awful design this is not even a joke it just plain sucks Ooh, the World Kitchens. Central Cafeteria. This is Makhari Mese, which is, of course, where the event takes place. It's also where Tokyo Game Show takes place, so it's just like a huge, gigantic area. Howdy. Are oh, you recording? <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, so he says just walk in. Yeah. And then meet him near the main stage. Okay. So we get our badges. This is. That's oh the reason my he was like, trying to be me, and then they realized like pretty quickly that it was not me, <laughs> and they felt really weird about it. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty weird. So that guy walking by and saying that is was, was pretty good. Oh wow! I didn't expect this. What a cool like entrance site.
Wow, the rumble fish even. How about I'm that? To, trying to find the footsies boot right there. That's wild. As you can see, it is full of people. And this venue, I mean, you can see it as well, it's huge. It's by far the biggest venue that Evo Japan has had. The first year for Evo Japan was pretty funky. It had like this weird sort of L-shaped venue, it was smaller. And then last year, it was a normal looking big open space, but it was, I mean, I would say half as big. It was substantially smaller. And it also felt less crowded. So the fact that this is more crowded, as you can see, super crowded. And also in this huge space, I think it's, it's pretty great. You know, I mean, it, it shows that the scene is really interested in having a big tournament like this. All that stuff we just passed through was where the players play. That's the actual tournament area. And then here's the stage, obviously. The tournament hadn't actually begun yet at this point, so people are kind of milling about. You know, there's not much action actually happening. I think that's why it was so crowded, because everybody's sort of milling about in advance trying to find out where they should go. Once it actually began, it was, you know, sort of settled down a little bit. You got the side stream here. You got the Japanese stream on the right side right there. And then we're going to check out the English stream here. in Japan just came out. I gotta get a Kwamba, man. You know that the, sucks. The, the new Chinese virus, virus Yeah, there's, there's, there's a real serious virus going on. Wow. Yeah. It's like, real serious. Like, like internationionally the Japanese well, like, guy, concerned. The Japanese MC said everyone please wear masks today. They didn't translate the English like they said Japanese. I always like checking out the back. It's always cool to see. Look at all the monitors and doohickeys that eh, you can kind of barely make out through this camera. Look at it. You got blinking lights. Who knows what it all means? I don't know. I haven't no idea, <laughs> but it looks like it's probably a pretty complex and cool operation. And then on this side... And then I looked at the controller thing, there's like the dash button, and I was like, oh, she's trying to hold the button, and then she runs even faster, and that's maybe that's everything. I was like, I'm an idiot. Like old games like that, yeah. I think the like games are not... This is the Chiba Urban Monorail. It's the longest suspended monorail in the entire world. We're in downtown Chiba right now, and then you can take this monorail uh, to another stop, and then another line from there, and then you can get to the venue. The venue's actually pretty far away from where we were staying in downtown Chiba. But anyway, that was cool. It felt like riding a very slow ninja from Six Flags. It's kind of interesting, I guess. The whole time we were here, it was cool and rainy and pretty gray outside. Anyway, I loved it because it was a nice break from my home in Southern California, which when I got home was 80 degrees and smoggy. This is just before Street Fighter V Top 8 is about to begin. I think they're about to play the first match. On the back left, there's a huge crowd. And then for whatever reason, the like front seats were fenced off and nobody was there. That was kind of a bummer. But yeah, there actually was a really big crowd. And in the back, everybody is wrapped with attention. Oh, they can't wait for the 
finals to begin and then uh it's under night in birth and spencer's playing like a card game or something is anybody doing work back here anybody actually involved all right that makes sense the prize of one million yen will be awarded to the champion A lot of people did a lot of great work at EVO Japan this year. But I gotta tell you, I would say some of the best work that I saw all weekend was right here, as these guys cleaned up like almost the entirety of the whole venue in like 15 minutes. It was incredible. You know, in previous years, I would have said that I thought EVO Japan was not worth attending. It was always kind of organizationally problematic and just stuff. I don't know, it wasn't run very well. There were just various issues. This year, they really overcame a lot of that stuff. And hats off uh, to them for doing so. I also heard that they gave a lot more authority to the local FGC to actually run things. Um, and then that ended up making it a lot better run in general. So hats off to everybody involved. It was really, really fun this year. Oh, oh boy. All right. Hey, take it down, Carter. Come on. Hey, are you going to do one sip and that's it? <laughs> you did two sips. I got it. All right. If, if I'm in this vlog, I have an appearance fee. It's 80 million yen. It's I'm Eight what's, times of the controller that that guy won. In that Canada. is eight yen. What's the eight what's million. the conversion of yen to dollars? Eight million equals one dollar <laughs> equals eight million. What? I'm in eight million dollars of debt, and I need it. <laughs> this is what this is all about.